should learn to shut my pie hole. No one likes a smart mouth guy like me. Mum says I'm a good case for population control. Dad says I should watch more TV. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. 155 brand new luxury cars. Uh, Harry! Hang on. She's reading a book again. That's not normal for a five-year-old. I think she might be an idiot. Stop scaring your mother with those books, boy. Listen to this. It was the best of times and it was the worst of times. And she keeps on trying to tell me stories, Harry. It's not normal for a girl to be all thinking. I'm going to have to call you back. I'm trying to make the biggest business deal of my entire life, and I have to listen to this. Well, what about me? I have a whole house to look after. Dinners don't just microwave themselves, you know. I'm off to bleach my roots, and I shan't be talking to you for the rest of the evening. But I'm going to make us rich. How rich? Very rich. Stupid rich. Russian businessmen. Dark glasses. Expensive suits. I'm going to sell them 155 old bangers as brand new luxury cars. But that's not fair. The cars will break down. And what about the Russians? Fair? Listen to the boy. I'm a girl. Fair doesn't get you anywhere in life, you little twit brain. Mm. I'm just happy that Michael here inherited this old man's brains. Ah, son? Michael. Well, I shall take the money when you earn it, and I shall spend it, but I shan't enjoy it because of the despicable way in which you've spoken to me tonight. This is all your fault, you little bookworm. Now go, get off the bench. Jack and Jill went up a hill to fetch a pail of water. So they say their subsequent fall was inevitable. They never stood a chance, they were written that way. I wonder why they didn't just change their story. We're told we have to do it, we're told, but surely. Sometimes you have to be a little bit naughty. Just because you find that life's not fair, it does mean that you just have to grin and bear it. If you always take it. Mom, 
Would you like to hear a story? <laughs> Don't be disgusting! The sooner you're locked up in that school, the better. <laughs> Matilda, what a pleasure to see you in the library again. Yes, I mean, my mom wanted me to stay home with her, but I think it's good for parents to have their own personal space sometimes. Oh, Matilda, your parents would be so proud to have a girl just as clever as you. And you tell them stories like you tell me. Oh, Matilda, I love your stories. That's a hit, by the way. Once upon a time. The two greatest circus performers in the world, an acrobat and an escapologist, fell in love and got married. They performed some of the most incredible feats together, and people would come from miles around. Kings, queens, celebrities, and astronauts, and not just to see that kill, but also that love for one another. Which was so deep, it would set cats with purrs they passed, and dogs would weep with joy. They moved into a beautiful old house. And all of them would love to they were sad. We have have a child. Their sadness overwhelmed them and their work became the only place they could escape the tragedy of their lives. So they decided to perform the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It is called The Burning Woman Hurling Through the Air with Dynamite in Her Hair Over Sharks and Spiky Objects. Caught by the man locked in the cage. It is the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It is our destiny. <gasps> well, what happened? I don't know yet. I'll tell you tomorrow. Bye, Miss Phelps. I'll see you the first day of school.
Putney and today is a very special day, your first day of school. Now, can anyone read this? I mean, oh, please pick me, miss, please pick me. Very well, Nigel. Yes, I think we'd better leave it there. We don't want you to burst a blood vessel on your first day. Lavender? It's the first word. Tomato? Um, no, but tomato is a very good word. Yes! Matilda? I can now read words. So, Matilda, you can read words? Well, I needed to learn to read words so that I could read sentences. Because basically a sentence is just a big bunch of words. And if you can't read sentences, you've got no chance with books. And have you read a whole book by yourself? More than one. I love books. Last week I read quite a few. Well, what books have you read? Nicholas Nickleby, Oliver Twist, Jane Eyre, The Lord of the Rings, Crime and Punishment, and... And... And Cat in the Hat! Asking Russian. Oh, don't tell me we're not rich. They took one look at the mileage on the first car and said that these cars were knackered. I told them that the mileage was so high because of a manufacturing mistake. So you lied? Of course I lied. And they didn't believe you? Of course they didn't believe me. I've got green hair. I've got hair. <laughs> What's this? Another flaming book? No. What's wrong with telly? No, no, it's a lovely book. Honest, you should read it. I'm sure you. Here's what I think. 
think of your lovely. No, it's a library book! Oh, you shoved a little rat! Oh, I'm late for my dance lesson with Rodolfo! Over there, on the table. And you know what? While you're at it, why don't you stick your stupid book to your stupid face? National Green Hair Day. 
in celebration of all the lovely things that are green, like lettuce and um, um, snot. Okay, thank you, sir. Monday, great, fantastic. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna leave it on. Looks like rain. due to my energy flow. What do you want, Miss Chutney? It's Miss Honey, and as you know, Matilda's in the bottom class, and children in the bottom class aren't expected to read. Well, her. stop her reading, then. Lord knows we've tried. I'm in the zone, doll. I can feel it in my hips. Don't waste this. Look, Miss Hussey, I'm not in favor of girls getting all clever pants. Looks are more important than books. Now look at you. Look at me. I chose looks. You chose books. Good day. Somewhere along the way, my dear, you've made an awful error. You ought to blame yourself now. Come along. You seem to think that people like people who are clever. It's very quaint. It's very sweet. But wrong.
Daddy. You're going to march in there and give them a piece of your mind. Leave it alone, Jenny. The more that you try, the more you'll just look like a fool. This is not your problem. You've not got the spine. You are a teacher. Just go back to Well, I shall do my best to answer them. How does that sound? Oh, Matilda, that is the biggest hug in the world. You're going to squeeze all the air out of me. Matilda Wobbles, where is Miss Trunchbull? Aha, so you admit it to you. Admit what, Miss Trunchbull? This morning, the sparrow carbuncle sneaked like a serpent into the kitchen and stole a slice of my private chocolate cake from my tea tray. No, I did not. Headmistress, Matilda's been here all morning. Oh, a standing up little spitball, are you? Well, this crime took place before school started. Therefore, she is guilty! Okay, look, I stirred the cake, and honestly, I was really, definitely, sort of almost thinking about earning up. Me. But I was having a lot of trouble with my belly, and that trunchbull's cake was so good that I had scoffed it down too quick. And now was beginning to fight back. <laughs> See? I didn't do anything. You are a crook and a thief, and I shall crush you. Lower intestine. 
slipping and she she fell. Did she survive? She broke every bone in her body except for the ones at the ends of her little fingers. She lived long enough to have their child. Love our daughter with all your heart. She's all we ever wanted. And then she died. And then things got worse. Worse? Oh no, Matilda, they can't get worse. Because the escapologist was so kind that he never blamed the acrobat's sister for a single thing. In fact, he invited her to move in to help look after his daughter. She was nothing but cruel to the girl, beating her if she ever did anything wrong. But always in secret so that the escapologist never suspected a thing. Let's call the police! Mrs. Phelps, it's just a story. What? Oh, yes, of course. I better go. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I would like to talk to you about a serious topic, something horrid that has been going on in this show right here. And if there are any children in the audience, I please ask of you to not try any of these horrible stunts at home. They are not nice things and they are certainly not right things. I'm of course talking about reading books. It's normal for children that behave in this fashion of reading books. It can cause horrible things like wearing out the eyes and stunting the brain it can cause side effects such as, but not limited to, being short, fat, ugly, stupid, annoying, crude, and overall just makes you nauseous to look at them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to please raise your hand if you've ever read a book before. <gasps> certainly never put a hands up in a theater ever again. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you the greatest feats of man, Tally! Come on, son. Somewhere on a show, I heard that a picture tells a thousand words. So Telly, if you bother to take a look, is equivalent of like, lots of books. All I know I learned from Telly, this big old beautiful box of facts. If you know something already, baby special journal over just like that. In this joy and in this laughter, folks living happily ever after. All you need to make you boys is 23 myths plus advertisements. Why would we waste our energy turning the pages? One, two, three. We get sick company on a lovely beloveries, watching people talking and singing and doing stuff. All I know I learned from Telly, the bigger the telly, the smarter the man. Now, as you can see from my big telly, just what a very clever fella I am. Take it away, son. <laughs> Can't learn that from a stupid book. All I know, I learned from telly. What you think and what you boy. I was pretty smart already, but now I'm really, really smart. Yes, very, very smart. In this chat, on endless panels, endless content on endless channels. All you need really having to think or nothing. Why would we waste our energy trying to work out Ulysses? We can sit happy on lovely but laughing watching slightly famous people talk to really famous All I know I learn from telly. The bigger the telly, the smarter the man. As you can see from my big telly, just what a very clever fella I am. Who the dickens is Charles Dickens? Mary Shelley, gosh she sounds smelly. Harry Potter, what a rotter. Jane Austen in the compost bin. James Joyce doesn't sound nice. Ian McEwan, it feel like spewing. William Shakespeare, Schmilliam Shakespeare. Moby Dick, easy grandma. All together now. All I know I learned from telly. The bigger the telly, the smarter the man. As you can see from
locked the door and went out. Have I been so wrapped up in the guilt of my life that I've forgotten the one thing that mattered the most to us, to you? I love you so much by spending the rest of the life, the rest of my life, making it up to you. But when the little girl fell asleep. The escapologist's thoughts turn to the acrobat sister. Boarding children is her game, is it? Then let's see what she can do when the wrath of a grown man stands before her. But that was the last the little girl ever saw of her father. What are you doing with these books, woman? They... they're for Matilda. Not on my watch. There is an age for reading and an age for being a filthy little toads. These are toads, aren't you, Bob Trotter? Uh, yes, Miss Trotter. Uh, Bob Trotter is now a good toad. Sit! <laughs> Miss Honey, you believe in kindness and fluffiness and kindness and teaching. That is not teaching. To teach the child, we must first break the child. <whistles> Quiet, you maggots! But no one was speaking, headmistress. Miss Honey, when I say quiet, you maggots, you are entirely included in that statement. Where is my jug of water? I'll get it, Miss Trenchful. Ugh, stupid girl. Look at you. Flabby, disgusting, revolting. Revolting, I say. I think it's time we toughened you all up with the little feast Ed. <laughs> Reeking. Quiet, maggot, while I'm speaking. Reeking with the most disturbing scent. Oh, the finest nostril smell it, but I know it all too well. It is the odour of rebellion. It's the bouquet of dissent. The smell of rebellion comes out in a sweat. And if his egg will get you sweating. And it won't be long before I smell the palm of aiding and abetting. A bit of this egg will tell us who has a head full of rebellious thoughts. Hold, hold, just like a rotten egg, fits the top of a bucket of water. The smell of it shows just the stench of it and the rig of prepubescent. Protest, a fucking defiance, the owner of the walked up anarchy and progress. Please, please. Once we've exercised these demons, they shall be poo poo for scheming. Some double time discipline should stop the rat from sitting in. All right, let's step down. Double time. One, two, three, four. Discipline, discipline for children who want to listen. Cockroach! You 
did this, you vile, repulsive, malicious little sinner? Ow! No! How dare you? You are not fit to be in a school. You are to be in prison in the deepest, darkest, darkest of prisons. Oh, I shall have you will that strap to a trolley with your muzzle over our mouth. Oh, I shall. Have you ever wondered? Will I have about how when I say say red? For example, there's no way of knowing if red means the same thing in your head as red means in my head when someone says red. I'm not sure, but I wonder if inside my head I'm not just a bit different from some of my friends. These answers that come into my mind unbidden. These stories delivered to me fully written. And when everyone shouts, because they seem to like shouting, the noise of my head is incredibly loud. And I just wish they'd stop my dad and my mum and the telly stories would stop for just once and I'm sorry I'm not quite explaining it right but this noise becomes anger and the anger is like this burning inside me would usually fade but it is a today and the heat and the shouting my heart is pounding my eyes are burning suddenly everything everything is Just that still sort of quiet Like the sound of a page being turned in a book Or a pause in a walk in the woods I know the people around me Their mouths are still moving The words they are forming Cannot reach me anymore and it is quiet and I am warm like I said into the eye of the storm incredible mind of yours. I mean, there's not enough room in my head for all of my brains that they have to squish out through my eyes. Not exactly, but yes, something like that. You're a very special girl, Matilda. I met your mother. She's unusual. What about your father? Is he proud to have a daughter as clever as you? 
Oh yes, he's always saying, Matilda, I'm so proud to have a daughter as... That's not true, Miss Honey, he's not proud at all. He calls me a liar and a cheat and a nasty little creep. I see. Well, here we are. Home sweet home. Are you poor? Yes, yes I am, very. Don't they pay teachers very much? No, they don't, but I'm even poorer than most. I used to live with my aunt, but one day I was walking and I came across this shed. I fell absolutely in love with it, so I ran to the farmer and begged him to let me move in. He looked at me like I was crazy, but he agreed and I've lived here ever since. But Miss Honey, you can't live in a shed. I'm not strong like you, Matilda. My father died when I was very young. Magnus was his name. He was kind, but once he was gone, my aunt became my legal guardian, and she is mean and cruel like you can hardly imagine. And when I became a teacher, she presented me with a bill for looking after me all those years. She made me sign a contract promising to pay for her back every penny. She even made a document that said my father had given her his entire house. But did he really do that? Just give her his house? I find it hard to believe, just like how I can't imagine he would have killed himself, which is what she said had happened. You think she... Did he make adoptions, honey? I cannot say. But all I know is that after years of being bullied by that woman, it's made me, well, pathetic. I was trapped. Let's go to the police! We can't. We have no evidence. And besides, my aunt is a highly respected... Who is she? I cannot say. Who is she? Matilda, Who I Who is she? It's Miss... Miss Trunchbull? Yes. is going to have a very special spelling test. Any child who gets one single answer wrong shall go to Turkey. <gasps> what are you looking at? You. You. Spell, oh, let me see. Spell newt. Newt. N-E-W-T. Newt. Old. Miss Honey told us. She's very good at teaching. Nonsense. You, stand up, turn around, and spell the one thing that you all are. Revolting! R-E-V-O-L-T-I-N-G. Revolting. You're cheating! I've taught them, that's all, with kindness and patience and respect. How dare you bring those words into my classroom, madam? You know nothing of teaching, and I shall prove it. You, spell Antrochamino Septicostomosis. But that's not even a word. You just made it up. Spell or go to Chokey. And I should warn you, it has silent letters. Um, A, M, C, H, I, L, L, E. Oh dear, oh deary, deary, dear. K, I'm so sorry, it was a silent Z. You're going to Turkey.
and I was now the owner of the beautiful old house, which was once owned by my evil aunt, one Agatha Churchill. Who is never seen again. The Churchies were immediately destroyed, and a new headmistress took over. And her name was Miss Honey, and it was often said that it was the best school in all the land. Matilda was never again able to move things with her eyes. She said it was because she no longer had a need for superpowers. But she was still stuck with parents who were cruel and called her names. Hurry up! We don't have time for dilly-dallying. We're going to Spain forever! Spain? But why? Because this twit brain sold 155 old bangers to the Russian Mafia! They're here! Hide! What are they going to do to my legs? My beautiful legs! Where's your father? He's... I don't know. The Wormwood is a very stupid man and assumed I was stupid too, which is a very rude and stupid thing to do. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid my father is quite rude and very, very stupid. You seem smart. Sadly, in my line of work, I don't often get to meet smart people like you. Most of the people I deal with they're thinking so backwards. Backwards! I can have one of my friends teach your father and nurse. And one day, when he leaves hospital, he'll be stupid. But not so rude. Mm -hmm. What do you say? That's a very tempting offer, but I think I've had enough of my revenge. Your father is very, very lucky to have you as his daughter. Quick! Let's get out of here before they change the lives! Let me tell to stay here with me. What? You mean... Leave my only daughter here with you? Dad, you you called me your daughter. Mr. Wormwood, I would love to take Matilda, and I'd look after her with love and respect. And I'd pay for everything. Matilda, do you want to stay here with Miss Honey? Yes, yes, I do! And you want to look after her? I do. Well, we are a bit short of room, so I guess it's okay. Come Thank on. you! And Matilda hugged Miss Honey. As the Wormwoods, as the Wormwoods and Rudolfo sped off into the distance, because they had found each other. Yes, they had found each other. 